Good to survive, Jim. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, members of staff, the public, and uh, members of council. Welcome to our meeting of July Monday, July 26, 2021. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Are there dec any declarations of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Seeing none, I have a motion to accept the agenda. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Williams and uh, seconded by Councillor Massey, but Councillor Massey is away on vacation. So Councillor Madden, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry accepts the agenda of the regular meeting of Council on Monday, July 26, 2021. Any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. I have a motion moved by Councillor Manley, seconded by Councillor Noble, that the minutes of the following meetings be adopted as circulated. Regular meeting of Council, June 28, 2021. Committee of the whole meeting, July 21st, 2021. Any discussion on the minutes? Yes, Councillor Wensink. Just wondering for agenda item 7B, the Maxwell Sports Complex, if we can just add that it's the concerned citizens are worried about the future use of the ice surface as opposed to, you know, just a general statement about the Maxwell complex. Okay. Uh, CAO Huskinson, that, uh, will you reflect that? Yes, yeah, certainly I will, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so uh, it will be as amended. All those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, staff reports, community services department. I have a motion moved by Councillor Noble, seconded by Councillor Manley. That council receives staff report number CS 2021-17 and that council approves the community improvement plan project at 23 Kenyon Street, East Alexandria, Ontario, as submitted by the property owner, Lucie Lajoie. Program B, Building Improvement Grant, representing a matching grant of 50% up to a maximum of $5,000 for one facade visible from the street. Program E, Building Permit Grant, representing a grant equal to 100% of the eligible building permit fees to a maximum of 750. And a municipal loan program of 10,000. Total grants, 5,750. Total loan, 10,000. Welcome in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're pleased to bring forward the CIP application that was reviewed by the Arts, Culture and Heritage Committee at the last July 5th meeting. This property is located at the corner of Dominion and Kenyon at 23 Kenyon Street East in Alexandria, and it's in the village core area. The property owner is turning this into a four bedroom uh, bed and breakfast unit. And the section that we're looking at for these renovations is the light gray sections that you will see in your pictures moving on from page three of this report. So if you note, there is another property, another building at the edge of the property, and that is presently being used as a medical clinic. So we're not speaking about that part of the property, we're speaking about the light gray two-story part of the property. So the property owner is looking at removing the present siding that's there and cladding it in board and batten to bring it closer to the appearance of the brick building. They're also looking at enlarging one of the doorways at the bottom to make this an accessible doorway and replacing the two windows at the top. This does mean that there will be an accessible ramp that's going to be installed later on this summer, but the ramp is not part of the CIP ask tonight. The whole project itself is estimated to be a little over $25,000. And of that, uh, you will note that we're asking for approval of um, um, matching grant of program B up to 50%, maximum $7,500 for two facades that are visible from the street. You will see the different quotes that were supplied by the contractors. And of this, we are asking that there's a $5,000 maximum eligible amount. And if we move to the next page, you will see the pictures I was speaking of, the gray the light gray portion of the building is there. It will have only one door as we move forward and the two top windows will be replaced. There will also be some cornices that are going to be added to the roof line to match the cornices that are presently 
on the brick building. So that is all detailed in the quotes that were submitted by the contractors. If you turn to page four of my report, you'll see that there is uh, the design drawings that are there that show exactly what the finished project are going to look like, as well as the color of the paint that will be applied to the board and batten. We're also looking at new door, a new door that would be installed would be matching to the existing doors, again, keeping to the look of the building. And the new windows would also be in keeping of the look of the brick building. We're asking for a building permit fee to a maximum of $750, as well as a municipal loan program for the full amount of $10,000. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Anne, for your report. Are there any questions from uh, members of council? Okay, seeing none, seems like a great project. All those mm -hmm. in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moving on to the uh, Treasury Department, uh, award of RFP for Municipal Audit Services 2021-2024. I have a motion moved by Councillor Manley, seconded by Councillor Madden, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry awards the request for proposal for Municipal Audit Services 2021 to 2024 to Welch LLP. Welcome, Kim. Um, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council. The previous external audit proposal expired for the year 2020. So this one's moving forward for 2021 to 2024. Um, we only did receive two submissions, one from Welch LLP and the other one from KPMG. Uh, the big thing that swayed this was because of only two um, people competing for this, the biggest thing that hit was price uh, and that scored for 35%. So um, it was um, scored by myself and the deputy treasurer and you can see where it came out and basically because of price, Welch came in as the um, recommended bidder. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Any questions from uh, members of council? Just a question, Kim, was Welch, uh, are they, were they our previous? Uh, they, they were our previous one for still, uh, the last yeah. four years. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments from anyone? Okay, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Okay, moving on to uh, planning, building and bylaw enforcement department. Zoning Amendment Z10-2021. I have a motion moved by Councillor Wensink, seconded by Deputy Mayor Williams, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry accept the joint. My. Uh... I think I'm missing that one. Okay, so is should there be uh, Jacob? Should we have a uh, a motion for this? Yep, recommended motion that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry adopt zoning bylaw number Z10-2021. Okay, I don't have that in my package, so uh, I'll just take it out of the, this package. Okay, so I have a motion moved by Councillor Madden, seconded by Councillor Wensink, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry adopt zoning bylaw Z-10-2021 and that bylaw Z. Dash 10 dash 2021 be read a first, second, third time and enacted in open council this 26th day of July, 2021. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I will just share my screen uh, to refresh your memory. Uh, I will not go through my uh, entire report again. Just want to uh, bring up the highlights. Tell me when you can see this. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, so yeah, uh, bylaw number Z10-2021, it was presented to uh, council at the public meeting of planning on the, uh, on the 28th of June, 2021. Uh, the owner is uh, George and Maria Tawadrous. Location, it's located on Dominion Street North. Uh, the official plan is urban sediment area and the, res the zoning is currently residential first density. So the purpose of the, of the application was to rezone the subject property 
uh, from R1, so residential first density, to R3, so residential third density. And it was also to permit the reduction for maximum lot coverage requirement in the R3 zones from the required 35% up to the proposed 50%. So this is where it is. So just quickly, uh, it's just across the street from uh, White Rock Motel there on Dominion Street North, more precisely right here. So it's surrounded by residential uh, residential single family dwellings. Uh, and yeah, that's the end of the presentation. So what I want to add is that there was no further comments from members of the public. I did have a discussion with uh, someone who was uh, present at the other meeting. I explained them to to them a little bit further what it was. They seemed satisfied and we received no, uh, no additional comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Jacob. Are there any questions or comments from members of council? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you. It was too easy. <laughs> we'll get to next time. Uh, Public Works Department. Uh, the auto automatic vehicle locator ABL solution fleet tracking systems update. I have a motion moved by Councillor Wensink, seconded by Deputy Mayor Williams, that the Council of the Township of North Bungary accept the joint proposal from DICAN Inc. to provide automatic vehicle locator services. And furthermore, Council approves the upfront costs in the amount of 24,000 to be funded through reserves. Welcome, Tara. Thank you. Through you, Mayor McDonald and Council. Uh, so it was a joint procurement that we did with the county and the review or the evaluation committee was made up of one other municipality, myself and the county. So we reviewed them based on technical before then opening up or looking at the financial. So you can see the weighting in table one of my report. So the financial was only 30% of that score. The rest was based on technical. Um, so after our review and after some negotiations and questions with them, uh, with the two proponents, uh, we did come out with DICAN as being the recommendation. We did score the highest. And once we figured out our final numbers uh, with regards to hardware, um, they, they, they come out the best. So that is my proposal. Um, there might be some variation. We're going to try and use some of the sensors that we have just can't guarantee that they'll all be compatible until we actually award and start working with the vendor. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Any questions uh, on the report? Councillor Manley. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm reading this wrong or whatever. Um, I'm down sort of near the end of the report and it's talking about the, the cost breakdown for North Glengarry. It says the township budget, the 2021 budget identified uh, $30,000, allocated $30,000. So we, have, we had already budgeted that amount. Is that correct, Tara? Yeah, so through you, Mayor McDonald, to Councillor, there is $30,000 budgeted in the operating budget. So that would be our annual um, operating costs. So it's a bit higher than what we actually need. Um, however, there was nothing budgeted in the capital for the actual upfront installation of the hardware. Could we not so move, could, could we not move the like I'm looking at the total cost is 39,000. We budgeted 30,000. Did we not just use the 30,000 we had in the budget to, uh, to cover most of that and the other nine would come out of reserves? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor, it's, it's Kim. I know you can't see me. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, basically the 30,000 was uh, for the entire township, not just public works. So it was all the vehicles, including like bylaw enforcement, waterworks, things like that. It was not specifically just for public works, the 30,000. Okay. So um, it, it's not showing the, the way you're seeing it is not just for public works. So okay. the 30,000 was for the whole township. Okay. Um, so the upfront costs are what is not covered at this point in time. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So if I understand this correctly, because I, I, we also saw this at, at County Council where the, uh, this, I guess, originated from, um, this is then gonna provide basically a, a live uh, report that, that, that staff will be able to access and, and 
you know, moment by moment where exactly the vehicles are and, and the conditions, is that correct? Versus what, what the system was before that, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, so through you, Mayor McDonald to Deputy Mayor Williams, that is correct. Um, I did note that in my report that our current system isn't real time and the new system will be real time. That was part of the purpose of going out for a new system. We have some challenges with our existing system in the sense that we don't know that there's data gaps or things that didn't get picked up until the vehicle comes back to the shop and actually downloads the data. So it's after the fact, and that's a challenge, especially if we have a claim. Uh, we don't want a situation where we don't have that information. So having the real-time system in place is, is very useful in the sense you can check to see if any somebody calls in on the phone uh, to ask a question or has a complaint or says my road hasn't been plowed. We can go on and say, you know what? They're on your road right now. They were on your road just an hour ago. Um, so we would know. And if there is a claim that comes in, we do have um, better detail, I'll say. A follow-up, please, Mr. Mayor? Yes, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Um, it sounds like a really good investment to me, um, for sure. I'm just wondering, uh, is there going to be the opportunity for the public to be able to follow these plow routes? Hmm. Um, through you, Mayor McDonald, uh, in my previous role elsewhere, we did do the track my plow um, application and it was successful in our implementation. Uh, it wasn't well used. <laughs> so initially in the first couple of weeks, there was a lot of people that checked to see, you know, where the snow, the sidewalk snow plow was and where the plow was. And I think it was a lot of staff and council in our Keene residence. Um, and I know a lot of municipalities have that system. So I haven't checked to see what their, their stats are. Definitely is something we can look into for future. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Oh, sorry, Councillor Noble. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Karma, because that was one of my questions, the Find the Plow app, which Ottawa tried and yeah, it didn't go well. So it'll be interesting to see what else there is out there. And I just wanted to double check, I couldn't quite tell because I read the article in the paper the exact cost of the subscription after everything is installed. And I know you had the 25 or 35, depending on which package. Do we have an idea of the monthly subscription cost or the yearly subscription cost? Yep. So through you, Mayor McDonald to Councillor Noble, uh, the annual operating cost for it, including subscription and maintenance and any sort of upgrades is the 15,600 noted okay. in table two. Yep. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Go ahead. Right, just a, a quick call, uh, sorry, follow up on that one. Um, the annual cost, have they committed to that being an upset for any number of years or is it just a year at this point that we know of? Um, that is an excellent question. <laughs> I will have to follow up and get back to you to see how long that price would be held for or what the increase is. I'd have to pull the document back up. I didn't commit that to memory, sorry. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, none opposed. Okay, moving on to uh, Roland Massey Railway Crossing Improvements, Railway Safety Improvement Program, RSIP funding proposal. I have a motion moved by Councillor Madden seconded by Councillor Noble, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry approves a funding proposal for the Railway Safety Improvement Program with Transport Canada for roadway safety improvements at Roland Massey Road Railway Crossing. Tara. Yeah, so through you, Mayor McDonald to Council. Uh, I was approached when I first started uh, by Via Rail with regards to this crossing, and I think previous staff were also approached about the uh, improvements that are required there. Via Rail has done their work. We need to do our portion. Um, and the funding proposal has to be in for August 1st uh, for Transport Canada. And we won't learn if we're successful until April, approximately, of next year. So this would be something that we already budgeted for for this year. However, the, the funding doesn't necessarily align nicely with our budget year. So uh, I would propose that we wait till we find out what we're successful in getting, but carry forward the 70000 that we've already budgeted for this year for next year to be able to put out for the works to be done in our construction season next year. Perfect, thank you. Any questions or comments? 
Councillor Noble. I just, thank you, Mr. May. I just had a quick question. They're not pressing you to get it done this year though? You're okay to wait? So through you, Mayor McDonald to Councillor Noble, ideally <laughs> we would have coordinated the works. Um, it didn't happen or align that way. So yeah, the sooner we can get it done, the better. However, the Transport Canada funding um, time frame is a little bit awkward in comparison to the actual construction season. So we would have had to have put in last year for yeah. it. So that's the, and they're okay with it being delayed as long as they know that we're working on it. Yeah. Um, Thank you. As long as we're taking that initiative and have a plan, they're happy. Hey, Councillor Manley. Yeah, it's just wondering, Tara, do we do we have a, a do we have other railroad crossings that, that we're going to need to look at as well? So through you, uh, Mayor McDonald to Councillor Manley. Um, that is an excellent question, and that's one of the things that I actually have engaged the rail about having a, an upcoming meeting. So having meetings on a regular basis, so a couple times a year so that we know what's coming up before okay. the budget cycle so that I can at least be prepared because I don't want us to be in the same situation going forward. So they thought that was a great idea. Um, and so that will be, we've already set up some time to talk before our next budget cycle so that, because they have their one year and two year plan. So it'd be nice to align our capital plan with their capital plan so that we we're ready. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Madden. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chair, quick question. Uh, just, I'm curious about the overall expected cost on this. Like we have the 70 that we've budgeted. Do we, what's what's going in in the application in terms of dollar value? Uh, if you can give me two seconds, I will just quickly pull up my table. So, while I'm waiting for my viewer to find it, the, the Transport Canada Fund, if we are successful, will fund up to a maximum of 80% of the costs of the project. So I feel that our, what we've budgeted for the 70,000 will be enough to cover. Um, and we really only just have a rough guess until we actually go out. One of the things that I will potentially be proposing in the future, yeah, so it's around 100,000, but that's a rough guess. It's just under 100,000 that the consultant who did the work for Via Rail provided as a rough estimate. It'll be dependent on more survey work. So when Via Rail did their work, they only surveyed 100 meters north and south of the crossing. So to the north, that will work for us. That's enough information. But to the south, we're going to have to survey a little bit further south to find a better, a good tie-in point to meet their requirements. So it is a rough, a rough estimate. So until we go to market, I can't guarantee pricing. However, I feel that Eau Claire 70,000 will work um, if we're successful in getting a significant percentage funded by Transport Canada. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Any further questions or comments, members of council? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. There are none opposed. And private septic system inspections. I have a motion moved by Councillor Madden, seconded by Councillor Manley, that the Council of Township and North Hungary approve procurement of the septic inspections for the systems as per the Ontario Building Code. And furthermore, that Council approves the cost of the inspections, which can be accommodated within the existing operating budget. Tara. Thank you. So through you, Mayor McDonald. Yeah, the, um, I had brought this uh, up one of my updates at Committee of the Whole, saying this would be coming forward five years ago, the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, uh, had, along with our source water protection, had paid for, well, the province had paid for getting those septic, septic inspections done at the beginning of our, our risk management for source water protection. And then they're due every five years now, so it's up to the municipality to come up with how we want to run that program. They are required as per building code, so my proposal is that we work with uh, South Nation. They're also um, a risk officer for their source water protection and do septic inspections. Um, Raisin Region Conservation Authority doesn't have those resources available to them, uh, but in conjunction, I did talk to them and I talked to South Nation. They'd be able to partner with us or willing to collaborate with us on this work. 
some of the things to keep in mind is that the private property owner will need to get the system pumped out or cleaned out prior to the inspection happening. So the pump out will be at their cost, which it would be on a regular time. And they should be pumping it out on a regular five-year basis as per the ministry's recommendations and as per the building code. And that the, the municipality would cover the cost of the inspection. So we would pay South Nation to do the actual inspection at a cost of 200 per inspection. And then any repairs or any work that's required to the system would be also up to the private property owner to cover. Okay, thank you. Questions or comments? Seriously, Michael Madden, you don't have a question or comment? <laughs> Paying out of it. <laughs> okay, perfect. All those in favor of the motion? Councilor Deputy Mayor Williams. Oh, we have enough to pass the motion. So motion is carried until she comes back. <laughs> Thank you, Kara. Okay, moving Thank on you. to uh, the consent agenda. Sorry about that. I assume you were in favor on the last one. Yes, yes, yes. I lost. Sorry, I lost my connection there. No worries. Okay, I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Williams, seconded by no. Councillor Madden. That the Council of the Township of North Glengarry receives the items from the consent agenda, agenda for information purposes only. Are there any questions on the consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Under uh, new business, uh, support resolution cemetery funding. I really think you should have read this, Councillor Noble. But uh, I have a motion moved by Councillor Noble, seconded by Councillor Wensink, whereas municipalities in Ontario have been made responsible for abandoned cemeteries within their boundaries and are required by the Funeral, Burial and Cremation Services Act 2002 to ensure, ensure that the cemetery grounds, including all lots, structures and markers, are maintained to ensure the safety of the public and to preserve the dignity of the cemetery. And whereas cemeteries are not only symbols of respect, preserving the memory of families, prominent citizens, and local history, some cemeteries are landmarks in themselves and great, hold great historical value worldwide. And whereas preservation repairs to older cemeteries are very costly, requiring the specialized services of stonemasons and archaeologists, and whereas the care and maintenance funds of abandoned cemeteries are generally non-existent, or so small as to pursue, produce insufficient annual interest to cover even the cost of lawn care at the site. Now, therefore, the Council of the Corporation of the Township of North Glengarry hereby urges the Government of Ontario to immediately provide funding sources for municipalities for the ongoing maintenance and preservation repair of abandoned cemeteries in their care. And further, that this resolution be forwarded to the Bereavement Authority of Ontario, the Minister of Government and Consumer Affairs, the Rural Ontario Municipal Association, Roma, and our local MPPs. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. There are none opposed. Thank you, everyone. So I have a motion moved by Councillor Manley, seconded by Councillor Madden, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry receive bylaw 29 2021 and the council adopt bylaw 2021 being a bylaw to adopt confirm ratify matters dealt with by resolution and that bylaw 29 2021 be read a first second third time and enacted in open council this 26th day of july 2021 any discussion all those in favor motion is carried and So I have a motion moved by Councillor Madden, seconded by Councillor Wensink. There being no further business to discuss, the meeting was adjourned at 7.29 p.m. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Well, thank you to uh, members of the public, as well as staff and members of council for joining us tonight. Unfortunately, we won't be gathering this weekend at the Highland Games, but I uh, feel pretty confident that we'll be back there next year. Uh, enjoying uh, 
enjoying another weekend at, in Maxwell. So uh, otherwise, everyone is welcome to join uh, Deputy Mayor Williams at her house. She will be providing <laughs> free refreshments and food for the whole weekend. So please check her out on Car Street. So thank you, everyone. And thank you for joining us. Good night. Uh, good night. <laughs> hey, Carol. <laughs>